Well, the thousands of protesters who converged on the capital today all had their own reasons for being there, be the university students, school pupils, parents, academics or agitators. Paul Mason spent the day with some of the protesters. At the UCL occupation, they began the day knowing it would be decisive. But after 22 days here, they're already thinking about bigger things than a vote in Parliament. Um, I think it's really showed all the people that if you know you are against what government is doing and you're organized and you're unified and you're public um, then actually government does listen to you and I think that message has been so strong that other people will follow it and there is really is this sense of sort of a big society forming but I mean very contrary to the one that um, Cameron sort of envisages us being part of but I mean there's this like big society backlash and you can see it just increasing um, and I think the student movement is sort of at the, at the forefront of that. So I'm if it's about anybody, this movement is about people like Chris, a school student who just turned up from Lincoln on his own. I like to see myself as independent and free, and for me, being in debt is not being able to be free and being able to make choices. Uh, and uh, It is a real, do I go to university or not? Am I going to be able to get a job at the end of this? All this kind of things. You might not go. I might not go. That is the honest truth. I'm, I'm looking at different ways of... And, and they're not, I really do want to go to university, but I'm, I come from a not great, uh, not brilliantly well-off background. And so it's, it's quite difficult. My parents can't support me. We're sort of lower middle class. By lunchtime, upwards of 20,000 people like him were marching through the streets of London. The official leaders of the NUS could not bring themselves to take part. The seasoned politicos, though, think they've already changed the whole game of politics under the coalition. What has really changed here is there's a new set, there's a sense you can resist. That's what's changed. In the, after the 80s, people felt, because there's no alternative, you can't resist the government. There's, there's, there's no means of defeating them because there wasn't an alternative uh, to what, what was happening to that whole market agenda. That's what's changed. People think it, it, it is possible. The school students are setting the tone of this march, I think. I mean, I think they're almost the driving force. You get a behind. feeling that the undergrads are kind of deferring slightly to... There's a lot of... We are deferring to them, in a way. In a way, they're almost the kind of leadership of this, in a way. Because they're the ones who are immediately being impacted. They'll be the ones paying the higher fees. They're the ones who are panicking about the impact of huge amounts of debt if they were to have a university education. <laughs> When the march reached Parliament, it hit a dead end. Nobody knew where it should go. It's two o'clock and the front of the march has reached Parliament Square and there's nowhere for it to go other than into the police lines, which is just done. This was where the police began to lose control. With the fences down, soon there were skirmishes yards from Parliament. But the majority did not want to skirmish. They wanted to dance, above all, the very youngest. This is the unlikely force that blew a hole in the coalition, and the first time many of them will get to vote will be at the next general election. When students tried to break away from Parliament, it began a running battle which lasted long into the night. Mounted police charged repeatedly into the crowd. Protesters attacked through paint, fireworks and some heavy objects. At times the crowd overwhelmed the police and they used their batons freely. The police, too, suffered numerous casualties. Through it all, a sense of a break with what student protest has meant in the past. We're from the slums of London, yeah? How do they, how do they expect us to pay 9,000 for uni fees? And EMA, EMA with the only keeping us in college, what's stopping us from doing drug deals on the streets anymore? Nothing. As the day draws to a close, it augurs quite badly for the coalition government because the people who've been fighting here on the streets with their faces uncovered in full view of the CCTV cameras have by and large been ordinary young British people and they just hate what they're going to have to pay for their education. The streets around Whitehall have seen clashes before and student movements 
but never before has a government majority teetered under the pressure of a movement of sixth formers and to the sound of dubstep. Paul Mason, well, the architect.